Hi everyone. In the previous parts, we had gone through the first stage of aerobic respiration that is glycolysis and the second stage of uh, aerobic respiration that is citric acid. Now, in this part, we will discuss about electron transport chain that is ETC. Okay. So, firstly, let's have a quick overview of uh, this aerobic respiration then we will move in detail about the ETC. As we already learned that uh, aerobic respiration is going to be defined if the molecular oxygen is a terminal electron acceptor then that metabolic pathway is going to be called as aerobic respiration and this aerobic respiration is going to occur in three stages the first stage is glycolysis the second stage is citric acid cycle and the third stage is electron transport chain so this is all the things that we have discussed isn't it so what happened in the first stage we had the synthesis of pyruvate now that pyruvate was converted into the acetyl coenzyme a which is going to be the interlink between the first stage and the second stage that is tca cycle now, once this acetyl CoA is getting entered and combining with the oxaloacetic acid, you are going to have the completion of the TCA cycle, isn't it? And during the uh, second stage, you are going to have some sort of uh, synthesis of NADH2, FADH2, all these things. Now, these whatever the electron carriers are going to be entering into the third stage called as electron transport chain and they are going to be oxidized by the electrons oxidation reduction mechanism and you are going to have the synthesis of uh, ATP by a process called as oxidative phosphorylation. So we will discuss about this oxidative phosphorylation, what are the types of uh, phosphorylations, all these things in the next part. Okay. So let's begin the electron transport chain or electron transport system. So, as we know this electron transport chain or ETC or the sequences of uh, oxidation reduction reactions that occur in cells and th the reactions are going to be mediated by a number of electron carriers and electron carrier enzymes. Now, the electron transport chain of bacteria is going to that means prokaryotes occurring in the plasma membrane that means why that is occurring in the plasma membrane as we know the bacteria do not possess the mitochondria so obviously that occurs in the plasma membrane then coming to eukaryotes it occurs in the mitochondrial or cytoplasmic membranes okay some bacterial electron transport chain resembles this mitochondrial electron transport chain also for example uh, if we take a e coli uh, although that mechanism of electron transport chain is similar to the mitochondrial but it is quite different in having the electron carriers okay in their cytochromes so the electron released from the uh, reduced coenzymes pass through so what are the reduced coenzymes it may be NADH or FADH2 so they will pass through a number of electron carriers and finally reach the oxygen and the energy lost by these electrons during the electron flow is utilized for the synthesis of ATP. Okay, so that whole process now we will discuss both in prokaryotes as well as the in eukaryotes, but not in depth. We will discuss them in a brief note. Okay, let's begin. So, the total process of electron transport chain is going to be as follows. I will show you the figure then you will come to know. So, this is all to have a glance of the notes that I am going to explain. So, this is a picture of a electron transport chain that is occurring in the prokaryotic cell. So, what is happening? So, the process of electron transport chain is as follows. The first thing that is NADH plus H plus undergoes oxidation and donates two electrons and two protons to to what it is going to uh, uh, what we call it as donate so to the fmn what is this fmn a flavo mono nicotinin a flavo mono nicotinin so this nadh plus h plus is going to uh, donate two protons and two electrons to the compound called as flavo mono nicotinin which is a 
uh, protein and this again on oxidation it is going to form the FMN H2 and from this FMN H2 again two electrons and two protons reach a coenzyme called coenzyme Q. Now this coenzyme Q gets reduced and converts into coenzyme QH2 that is a reduced form of coenzyme Q. Now this coenzyme Q also receives two protons from the external donor that is FADH2 and get reduced uh, and oxidize it and this will oxidize it to FAD okay now what is happening the NADH is going to donate the two protons and electrons which was taken by FMN and that is going to be converted into FMN H2 now this again donates the two electrons and two protons to the enzyme coenzyme Q and that gets uh, oxid reduced to coenzyme QH2 that is a reduced form of coenzyme Q now this again donating that is a coenzyme QH2 that is a reduced form of coenzyme H2 again going to donate the two protons and electrons to the cytochrome complex okay we are going to have a cytochrome complex and that uh, is going to be of uh, like cytochrome B then cytochrome C1 C then A A3 okay and finally reach the oxygen so let's see what is happening so here this coenzyme QH2 undergoes oxidation and the two electrons are liberated and from here it passes through the cytochrome B and then cytochrome C1 then cytochrome C then cytochrome A and then cytochrome A3 and finally reaches to the oxygen okay now electrons are donated to the oxygen by cytochrome A3 which form a complex called as cytochrome oxidase so here you are going to have a complex called as cytochrome oxidase and in this process only two protons are being released from this cytochrome that is coenzyme q which reaches this oxygen so that a molecule of water is formed so that's how your end product is going to have the water molecule also and here if you observe Iron present in the cytochromes get reduced from ferrous state to ferric state. So ferrous means Fe3 plus state and ferric means Fe2 plus. Whenever it receives electrons and oxidizes to Fe3 plus. This is ferric and this is ferrous. Okay. So when the ferrous is going to take the electrons, it becomes the ferric. And with, whenever it donates the electrons, what it happens? It comes to the ferric. If it accepts the electrons, it becomes the ferrous. If it is going to donate, it becomes the ferric. So in this electron transport chain, ATP synthesis is going to occur at three stages. Do you observe here? One, two, three. Isn't it? So here, one NADH is going to give rise to how many ATPs? Three ATPs. Then coming to the FADH2. I told you one FADH2 is equal to two ATPs. Now if FADH2 is going to enter into this electron transport chain then we will get the two ATP molecules. So that is how uh, this electron transport chain is going to give rise to the three molecules of ATP by the oxidation of one NADH plus H plus and FADH2 is going to give rise to the two ATP molecules and these steps if you observe it is going to occur between the NADH2 and this FADH2 and then between the cytochrome B and the cytochrome C you are going to have one more ATP and one more ATP since is occurring between the cytochrome A and 3 so in between these two okay sorry it has come here so in between these two it is going to be so that's how overall from one NADH electron uh, flow the electron transport chain we are going to have the three ATP molecules are going to be generated. So this is all what happening in the prokaryotic electron transport chain. Let's have a quick uh, view of the pro eukaryotic electron transport system also. Okay. So here in the eukaryotic electron transport system, we are going to have mainly four complexes. How many complexes are there? Four complexes. So the whole process of the mitochondrial electron transport system can be seen like this. So for example, 
the electrons donated by this NADH enter the complex one. So what is the complex one? It is NADHQ oxidoreductase or simply called as NADH dehydrogenase. Okay, and from this complex one, the electrons will pass through a flower protein FMN to a series of iron sulfur proteins and then to the ubiquinone that is coenzyme Q. Now the electrons donated by the succinate, so here the succinate is also going to be involved and it is going to uh, give the electrons or donate the electrons to the complex 2. So what is this complex 2? It is a succinate Q reductase which is also called as succinate dehydrogenase. Okay, succinate Q reductase or succinate dehydrogenase and from there the electrons will move to the coenzyme Q by the process of sulfur, iron sulfur proteins. Now we are going to have this ubiquinone or coenzyme Q serves as a mobile carrier of electrons because it is getting the electrons from the complex 1 and the complex 2 also. Okay, and these all electrons from the ubiquinone or coenzyme Q, it, the electrons are passing through the next complex that is complex 3, which is also called as Q cytochrome C oxidoreductase. The name of the complex 3 is Q cytochrome C oxidoreductase. Now, from the complex 3, it is going to be that means the electrons are going to pass through the, some sort of a prosthetic groups like cytochrome B, cytochrome B1, iron sulfur protein, then cytochrome C1 and finally reach the cytochrome C. So that means in between the complex 3 and cytochrome C, we are going to have a complex uh, prosthetic groups like cytochrome BH, cytochrome B1 and iron sulfur protein and even the cytochrome C1 and finally the electrons will reach to cytochrome C. Now the cytochrome C, a mobile connecting link between the complex 3 and 4, passes the electrons to complex 4, which is also called as cytochrome C oxidase. Okay. Now the latter carrier electrons through its prosthetic groups called as a cytochrome A, which is a heme A, cytochrome A3, and some sort of uh, uh, copper A, copper B and transfers them to molecular oxygen and reducing it to the water molecule. That means half O2 plus protons together you are going to get the H2O and which is the final product of respiration. Now this whole electron flow through complex 1, 3 and 4 is accompanied by proton flow also. Along with the electrons, the protons are also going to be moved through this one. From the mitochondrial matrix which becomes negatively charged to intermembrane space or what we call it as cytosolic site which becomes a positively charged. The mitochondrial matrix is negatively charged and the cytosolic site is going to be positively charged. Okay? The number of protons moved across the membrane at each side per pair of electrons transported is uh, somewhat uncertain. There is no certainty. So what happens? The current consequences is that at least 10 protons move outward during this NADH oxidation. Okay. So this is all about the whole process of uh, mitochondrial electron transport chain that occurs in the eukaryotes. Okay. So this is all about the electron transport chain that we have discussed. So with this, we have finished the aerobic respiration three stages that is glycolysis, then TCA cycle, then electron transport chain. And here just I want to mention the overall ATP generation from all the three stages of one glucose uh, oxidation. Okay, So here ATP yield during the prokaryotic aerobic respiration of one glucose molecule is like this. So the glycolysis, as we know, the oxidation of glucose to pyruvate is going to give rise to the two ATP molecules at the substrate level phosphorylation. And we are also having the two NADH, which after entering the EDC, we are going to get the six ATP. Okay, then coming to the preparatory uh, phase that is a TCS, in between the TCS cycle and the glycolysis, we are going to have the formation of two NADH okay where again here is the 6 ATP molecules are generated 
then moving to the Krebs cycle so where you are going to have the 2 GTP then 6 NADP that means 1 NADH is equal to 3 uh, 3 ATP so 6 threes are 18 and 1 FADH that is here 2 synthesis are there and 1 FADH is equal to 2 ATP so 2 twos are 4 ATP so all together if you are going to calculate so here is 6 6 plus 6 is going to be of a 12 18 okay and here is 2 so that's how you are going to have the total of uh, 18 okay 20 24 30 38 so all together you are going to have a 38 ATP generation for one glucose molecule undergoing the aerobic respiration so this is all about the aerobic respiration during uh, occurring in the microorganism okay so that's all about the aerobic respiration in another part you can go through the anaerobic respiration and as well as the fermentation thank you